Forager is a wholesome open world survival game where you are dropped into the wilderness with nothing more than a pickaxe and dreams of being the richest pixelated prospector around. But don't let the cutesy art fool you. Forager is full of deadly obstacles, whether it be impossible NPC side quests, giant laser beaming robots, or fighting off literal demons, every task ends up being the ultimate test. And for the next 100 days, I'll have to pass each and every test with flying colors if I want to become the prospector I was always meant to be. My journey starts with me being spawned in on a small island. After familiarizing myself with my inventory and some of the buildable structures I can make, the game revealed its true controlling nature. Let's get started by building a furnace. Don't tell me what to do. That's the first and foremost, don't tell me what to do. Oh, there's like, what? Wait, that took a minute, no? I'm kind of, kind of not built for this. Despite being clearly not built for the rough outdoors, I managed to gather enough resources for a furnace before receiving my first level up, which awarded me with my first skill point. Skills in Forager are split into four pathways, with each pathway having its own benefits. Certain skills also unlock special buildings that correspond to that pathway's strengths. For my first skill, I decided to go with the magical pathway that specializes in all things supernatural like spells and potions. Although, the first skill for this tree is pretty ordinary, and only gives a boost in experience gain. But, this would help me level up faster, which means more skills in less time. You see where I'm going with this? I collected more resources and built a fishing trap that would give me a source of food for later, along with a forge that would allow me to craft upgrades to my tools because this basic pickaxe was no longer cutting it. It also didn't take long for me to get another skill point, due to the magic skill I chose earlier. This time around, I chose a skill from the foraging skill tree that allowed me to find wheat, beets, and cotton more often, which would be important in the near future. For now, my goal was to get enough resources to create a basic shovel that I could now access from the forge. This was so I could gather sand to turn into glass bottles, which were needed for my first pickaxe upgrade. Definitely a lengthy process. Along the way, I picked up another skill, this one being from the economy skill tree that gifted me an instant 40 coins, which is a lot of money when you come from nothing like me. I found out shortly after I could use my coins to buy new land, which expanded my territory and also came with a shrine that gave bonus experience when gathering crops. My new land also brought new guests, which weren't exactly friendly. Ow! Okay, wait a minute. But this was fun since they dropped jelly, which was also needed for gear upgrades. Once dealing with a few, I learned my first industry skill. This one allowed me to craft steel and glass from furnaces, so I could put all that sand that I would be gathering to good use when I eventually finished shovel production. In the meantime, I bought the deed to another plot of land. This time, a large chest was waiting for me, and after crafting a key, I was given this majestic top hat that I couldn't actually wear, so that was kind of a disappointment, but it did increase the worth of my coins, which I guess was more important if you're into being rich or whatever. Days 4 and 5 were filled with resource smacking, which is not the most exciting thing, but it led to me gaining two new skills. One, increasing my inventory space, and the other, unlocking leather that I can now access after building a sewing station. I turned some spare fiber I had in the thread to craft a small backpack, which increased my inventory space further before finally crafting the basic shovel that I set my eyes on like four days ago. Once it finished crafting, I was excited to finally gather some sand and was once again tricked by this evil 8-bit game. Apparently, in Forager, you don't get sand every time you dig, which was super lame to me and also meant I had to spend a few more days at the beach before I could go pop bottles. While on the resource grind, I unlocked swords and vaults where I could store items. I also purchased more land that had a lot of these experience fairies, which was kind of cool. But when night rolled around, I found out there was a fairy goddess that spawns, also pretty cool. What wasn't cool was what she wanted from me. SMALL DONATION? WOMAN! And with that encounter, I had received my first quest, and it was quite the challenge, so I figured I'd have to ignore the Midnight Woman for now. While progressing towards the Fairy Woman's quest, I expanded my territory and unlocked markets and banks, along with the hunting skill that allowed me to craft a bow, which, spoiler alert, I do not craft one of these until way later. Buying land had quickly become my favorite part of the game, as there was always something interesting to explore. My most recent purchases left me with a puzzle and a strange building that turned out to be a museum. The thing about it though was it was completely empty. Not much of a museum if you ask me, but alright. Once I looked through some of the exhibits, I immediately noticed they were very demanding. 
Some wanted extremely rare items, while some wanted huge quantities of common ones. I guess I had something to work towards. Since I couldn't help with the museum at the moment, I shifted my attention towards the mysterious puzzle. That made no sense to me at first. But after some fiddling, I figured it out, scoring myself another chest with a fishnet inside that made fish traps collect themselves. A pretty nice quality of life buff. Shortly after, I met this druid guy while buying more land who was not happy about the recent deforestation going on. The natural resources are being exploited by little jerks with pickaxes. <laughs> I wonder who that could be. In a last ditch effort to save the resources of the land, the druid gave me a quest to bring him two bottled torch bugs. Which, due to complete coincidence, I have been collecting for the same purpose. Not because I wanted to exploit them for gear upgrades or anything. I was rewarded with three druid scrolls for my efforts, before the druid gave me a second quest to bring him 30 tree saplings that I did not have at the moment, but would definitely keep my eyes open for. I explored the druid's treehouse and found out this was where he was keeping all those drippy robes he was wearing, and then I saw it. The one thing that separates clueless animals from living legends. The fedora. Looks pretty good on me, don't you think? <laughs> With my new status as fashion icon, I decided that if I was going to look like a businessman, I should probably have some form of business going on. So I decided to build a bank that would help me collect the money needed to fund my new lifestyle. While living a lie, I learned a few new skills. Capitalism that allowed me to sell things directly from my inventory, treasury that gave banks a bonus when they were next to each other, and alchemy that unlocked cauldrons so I'd have something to do when I felt wicked. The next few days featured more grinding, along with me crafting a sword and buying more land, which gave me access to this cool mining shrine that gave bonus XP for mining. My greed for land led me to picking up the colonization skill, reducing the cost of new land, and making two more banks so I could make use of that treasury skill I learned earlier. With all the economy skills I learned and my growing bank account, I had closed in on the not so small donation that the fairy queen wanted. Once paying her price as a sign of loyalty, she gave me a chest containing her fairy aura giving me health and stamina regeneration. Which brings me to how health and stamina work in this game. Health is represented by the three hearts in the top left of my screen, with stamina being represented by the green bar. As I mine resources, my stamina decreases until it reaches zero. Once this happens, I will lose a heart if I continue to work while exhausted, exchanging that heart for stamina. The only way to replenish health and stamina without this happening is food, with lower quality food only giving stamina and higher quality meals providing health as well. So this fairy aura should be a huge help whenever food got scarce. Speaking of higher quality meals, my land expansion led me to discovering this colony of giant talking beets, which were super nice to me. A little too nice if you ask me. Okay, okay, they're all chill. You are my favorite person in, in the history of ever. Wait, your sweet talk won't work with me. What does he have? Oh no. It's just beats. Does this make me a bad person? Why? <laughs> I think it makes me a bad person. But oh boy, do I enjoy it. Oh, there's just one more. You have to go too. I'm sorry. You're all giant beats, monster. <laughs> you know, I feel like it was only hard after for the first one. After the first one, it got very easy. I know how serial killers feel now. <laughs> Look, I'm not proud of what I did either, but everyone knows to be a successful businessman, you have to be willing to get your hands dirty. The night of the great beating, I met this mysterious merchant who sold crazy expensive stuff that I couldn't afford yet, but it was nice to know that he would be around from time to time. In addition to the large beats, I finally crafted that pickaxe upgrade I was grinding for, which gave resources the chance to drop jelly that I could use for future upgrades. I also unlocked this rainbow puzzle that involved magic mushrooms. Once I solved the puzzle, I got another chest with a spirit orb inside. Spirit orbs are hands down the best consumable in the game. When using one, you get four choices. You can choose to boost your health, increase your stamina, gain permanent damage buffs, or instantly level up. I chose to boost my health pool, as three strikes you're out never Never really sounded fair to me. In addition to the new health buff, I also gained two new skills during my last days of foraging. The ability to craft boots and gloves, as well as reducing the time it took resources to smelt in furnaces. Things were coming along nicely, and I finally felt like the game wasn't out to get me. That was until I came across my first dungeon. What's in here?
ancient tomb? I'm down. I'm down to be in the ancient tomb. I'm in an ancient tomb. I feel like I shouldn't be here, but my curiosity is getting the better of me. Well, you know what they say about curiosity. The ancient tomb was a lot more than I asked for. The dungeon revolved around the mechanic of powering these structures with these power boxes to get through gates. Unfortunately for me, I was pretty bad at this. <gasps> I knew you were gonna be weird, man. I knew you were gonna be weird. Locking myself into rooms multiple times because I wasn't properly bringing the box through the gate with me. This happened a lot for like two days before I realized I was making life way harder than it needed to be and could just bring two boxes around with me. The dungeon was filled with these ancient technology guys who did not like me at all. Some of them had these laser attacks that locked onto me, while some were moving differently to say the least. When I finally got the hang of the puzzles and started making progress, I found this lightning rod that was a complete game changer, being able to power structures and melting resources and mobs alike. With my new weapon of mass destruction, I was pretty confident in completing the dungeon. That was until I made it to the boss. Not only did this guy take no damage from my new tool, he also gave birth to like a million henchmen while I was fighting him, which did not help oh, me wait. at all. Somebody told me you had friends. My strategy for beating him involved smacking him with my sword and then using my thunder rod to deal with all the side characters that kept showing up. Oh my God, there's a million things in there. <laughs> when I finally beat the boss and cleared out all the goons he summoned, I was rewarded with an ancient seal and an extra heart on top of a bunch of gold and a thunder strike potion. Not a bad reward for all the pain those power boxes put me through. While trapped in the tomb, I gained two skill points that I used to master physics, unlocking power plants, and to become an engineer, unlocking droids and EMP grenades, which were all things that I couldn't make right now, due to me not having a factory yet. In the meantime, I spent some of my pillaged gold on land, introducing me to this old guy who might be my favorite NPC in the game. What do you want? Uh, it's dangerous to go alone. Look at this. Oh, he's just gonna give me something. <laughs> It's dangerous to go alone. Take this. Gives me poop. You know what, old man? I'm sure he means well. Once giving his generous gift, the old man gave me a quest to retrieve a golden egg for him after hearing about them from his little bird friend. Not gonna lie, I was starting to question the old man's sanity a little. Golden eggs are super rare drops from chickens. And since there really isn't a method to getting them besides getting lucky, I would just have to keep the old man in mind. The rest of day 16 consisted of resource grinding and the birth of Volt Island because I'm always out of slots to hold stuff. While increasing my storage space, I unlocked windmills and sprinklers before crafting a golden pickaxe, giving resources a chance to drop gold doubloons, and a new pair of gloves that increased my attack speed. It turns out learning windmills was a better choice than I thought, as this was how you make seeds for all kinds of crops, including those tree saplings the drippy druid asked for. When I made enough saplings to turn into the druid, he rewarded me with a chest before giving me a quest just as far-fetched as that geezer from earlier. Find a dinosaur egg. I'm starting to think he knows that I'm taking the natural resources. Since I was at a dead end when it came to side quests, I resorted to my guilty pleasure of buying land, which unlocked this graveyard zone complete with spooky skeletons that I soon met after breaking a large pile of bones. <gasps> oh my god, what are you? What do you want? On the bright side, the big spooksters dropped spirit orbs on death, which was a one-time thing, but still pretty cool. While fighting the good fight, I leveled up and used my skill point on mining, which increased the amount of minerals dropped from rocks. I also used one of my spirit orbs to gain another skill point that I used to unlock what I suspected to be the dinosaur egg for the druid, and well... He's a disappointment, don't you awe him, but I guess he's kind of cute, or whatever. I named my new giraffe friend Wolfra, and decided to have him follow me around so I could show him the ropes of survival. I bought another piece of spooky land. This time it was home to a tower that turned out to be a skull galaxy, which had riddles to solve, which let me not even lie to you. I was not smart enough to solve these right now, so they would have to wait for later. I built a cauldron before using my second spirit orb that I got from the skull boys to unlock the craftsmanship skill, which unlocked royal steel and clothing along with a hammer that would be important later. I spent day 19 showing Wolfro how to grind resources before finally unlocking the chest the drip man gave me, which of course had some drip that would increase my XP gains. 
Speaking of drip, I crafted this water shovel that watered soil, making it easier to start a farm. Which was nice, as the food that I had gained from my business ventures was long gone, and I didn't really want to have to cook Wilthra. While farming and mining resources, I unlocked factories, putting me one step closer to that power plant and droid that I was looking forward to. To make a factory, I needed 5 royal steel, which requires a lot of rare gems. Lucky for me, I had just enough gems to cover it, and was just missing some regular steel due to all the bank building I was getting into. I set some steel to smelt during some much needed grinding and ran into the mystery merchant again, who was trying to scam me by the way with his outrageous prices. I did buy some great skulls from him since I would need them for upgrades, but there was no way I could possibly afford a spirit orb right now. I spent the downtime I had waiting on royal steel to fill out some of the museum, and to also do some farming, allowing me to bake a lot of bread, fixing my food struggle. When the time came to finally build a factory, I was excited to see what cool modern technology I could make. But this excitement quickly turned into anguish when I saw the amount of resources needed to get my hands on a droid. Two electronics and two fiberglass. I don't even want to look at this fiberglass. What are you going to do for this fiberglass? Nuclear machinery! Atomic bomb! Look your ears and run away. Look at the fiberglass. We need plastic. Glass. Royal clothing, bottled oil, and coal. How do you get bottled oil, man? Obsidian and crystal and two royal steel. Ay, 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 bro. For a droid, I just want a droid. Needless to say, I was pretty stressed about the amount of grinding ahead of me. In a stress-filled rage, I resorted to my one source of comfort in this pixelated purgatory, buying land. That led me down another rabbit hole. Before investigating the strange skull structure, I mined a fallen star and gained another skill point, unlocking fishing rods, useful for future treasure hunts. I then did some snooping and found out the skull structure was a huge skull maze filled with boners. To make matters worse, they all hated me, leading me to doing the dirty tango with all of them. This included the bigger skeletons that were super strong, completely face tanking my rod before slapping me with their huge swords. I failed the dungeon, but <laughs> I can't. <laughs> oh my god, okay. I failed the dungeon, but while inside, I found this necro rod that I couldn't use while in there, but found out that I could use it to make my own bone band. Oh, hello. How's it going? Oh my god, what the heck? I don't think they'll be joining willingly. When I finally made it to the end of the maze, I was rewarded with a skull seal and another heart, along with all the gold I had gained along the way. Perfect for feeding my land addiction that had become somewhat of an obsession, but it was all for a good cause. My goal for the distant future was to gather all the resources needed to craft myself a droid. However, that would require me finding crystals and obsidian, two resources that I haven't seen yet, but I know they exist somewhere. For my most recent land purchases, I received a bunch of golden gems for powering this tower, a sign with another riddle that, as you may have guessed, I couldn't solve, and a shield that gave me dodge chance. Not a bad land haul. I returned to the resource grind and gained a new skill, unlocking offshore drills, allowing me to gather bottled oil before receiving an unexpected gift. Try to find this one really. Wait. Oh, I got a golden egg! Receiving that golden egg from the faceless legend meant I could finally put a smile on the old man's face, so I decided to pay him a visit. Yeah. This is surprisingly underwhelming. <laughs> Nothing's ever good enough for you. It won't hatch into a lovely bird friend. You are so annoying. And I can't even eat it. Those are the only purposes of an egg. To be honest, I probably should have seen that coming. The chest the old man gave me contained a holy relic that did damage to nearby skeletons and demons. I tested this out, and the damage is more of a slow and steady thing, but still should be useful when fighting a horde of them. Days 24 and 25 were dedicated to making the druid mad and stacking bread, leading me to crafting a golden wallet and a skull pickaxe. With all the money making schemes I was a part of, I was able to buy my first piece of demon territory. The demons were like tankier versions of the skeletons, but were not the smartest, making them easy targets. The resources here were also pretty tanky, but dropped large amounts of goods, allowing me to get my hands on a good amount of obsidian. But my greed would soon lead me to making questionable life decisions. What is this? Choose boom, madness, lose one max heart, instantly level up three times. Valid. 
can I do it again? You can probably see how this got out of hand. I did catch myself, however, only sacrificing two of my hearts for three skill points and a lot of random potions. I used two of my blood pack points to unlock cooking pots and inscription tables, but couldn't decide on what to spend my last point on, so chose to save it for now. I then built a drill to collect bottle oil before withdrawing some money from the bank. Since the southern lands had been hiding obsidian, my logic was that northern territory should have the crystals I was looking for. Unfortunately, I got pretty unlucky with my first northern purchase, only giving me a sandy tower that was home to one of the most dastardly puzzles I have ever seen. The stress from the puzzle pushed me to trying my luck with another northern purchase. This time, I had to fight these ice wizard guys that had these ranged attacks that freeze you. Not very cool of them. Yes sir, I'll be here all week. When I finally beat the wizards, I got to talk to this fox guy who wanted an extremely large amount of poop, saying it was for a life or death situation giving me another long-term side quest. My hypothesis was also correct, and I was able to get my hands on some crystals, putting me one step closer to my own robot. Soon after, I finally decided on using my last blood pack point on the machinery skill, unlocking the flower press and giving me a chance to craft double items. The flower press could turn flowers into useful resources like crystals or sand for glass that would help me not have to spend so much time digging for it. I spent day 28 gathering resources and collecting bugs for the museum before building a cooking pot. The cooking pot would allow me to combine all kinds of ingredients into higher quality food that could restore more hearts and stamina than the bread I was used to, but I would have to come back when I had more ingredients. At this point, I had most things needed to make my droid, but was still missing two very expensive components, royal clothing and royal steel, or more specifically, the rare gems needed to craft them. This inspired the Great Gem Hunt, a legendary conquest dedicated to collecting the world's shiniest jewels filled with plunder and debauchery, a journey that only the strongest world could endure. I just hit rocks for a couple of days. Nice, I love mining for hours. I'm having so much fun. While the gem hunt wasn't as cool as I made it out to be, it did lead me to making a bunch of upgrades to my gear, collecting a ton of cash, and of course, gaining levels that I used to unlock mason tables and mining rods. I used the coins I collected to buy two northern lands, one being a dungeon called the Crystal Cave that had special crystal puzzles, kind of like the Sand Temple. The puzzles were based on reflecting a laser by rotating crystals around to melt frozen cave entrances. The cave was also home to some of those annoying ice wizards from before. Deeper inside the cave, I found an ice rod and a frozen key to open the boss door but I had no idea how to unfreeze it. My first idea was to use fire since it was frozen, I guess. So I used one of the potions I got from my blood pact earlier that made me a living inferno, but had no luck with the key. My second idea was to upgrade my pickaxe to the crystal tier so I could mine the key, which required a lot of royal steel, so I would have to come back later. I went to investigate the frozen tower that was unlocked earlier. And once again, I was visited by an age old foe, the puzzle demon. This one also stumped me, but don't worry, I come back and figure out all these puzzles later. Although the gem conquest from earlier was a good start, I still had nowhere near the amount of gems needed to craft the insane amount of royal steel for the pickaxe, since gems were so rare. This gave me the idea to use another one of those random potions I got from my dastardly deal earlier. This one increasing my luck and making resources drop more loot. I was hoping that the extra luck would help with my gem struggle, and after repeating this method of luck farming for a few days, I was finally able to craft the crystal pick, giving resources and trees an increased chance of dropping gems. During the luck mining, I filled out my first museum exhibit, giving me the merchant medallion. That would point to the mystery merchant guy who was selling goods that, now that I think about it, were probably illegal. I mean, this time he has an atomic bomb, where did he even get that? I also crafted golden gear and a nomad shovel, making it so I always got sand from digging. There was this weird sand statue too, that I couldn't interact with, but I guess it looked cool. Thank you, thank you, you're way too kind. The crystal pick was not the answer to the frozen key problem, which was pretty upsetting, but it gave me another idea. The next pickaxe upgrade was the demon tier that had the description of melting resources. Sounds perfect for this kind of job, am I right? Yeah, I'm not even gonna lead you on. That is not the way I complete this dungeon. But if I had to wait for the answer, so do you. The demon pickaxe was even more expensive than the crystal pick, making it a longer term goal. My next order of business was building a droid, and depending on what they can do, I might even make two. 
Full Metal fantasies aside, I spent the following days donating knockoffs to the museum, talking to my dealer, reading forbidden books, and of course, stripping the land of all its natural resources. You know, all the things that lead to good health and long life. This allowed me to learn some skills that would help me rob the land of its valuables easier. One giving me coal from all the rots that I mined, and the other increasing my chances of finding rare items. When the time came to finally craft my droid, I was excited to meet my mechanical sidekick, and more importantly, get them to do all the things I didn't want to. But, like everything else in this game so far, the outcome was unexpected. Ooh, 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 ooh. Activator droid, where is he? Where is it? Wait, what the heck? Is this the- is this the droid? What did I do with him? Wait, this is the ugliest droid I've- I don't want him anymore. So yeah, definitely not the droid I was looking for. My new droid named Bo was capable of shooting lasers and collecting dropped items, but he wasn't able to do any of the time consuming chores like farming that I wanted. I did find out that I could attach them to structures that increased the rate at which they crafted items. This is where Bo shined, making the same royal steel I used to create him. Fitting task considering he was a bit of a disappointment. Moving on from the failed industrial revolution, I crafted a big backpack and gave fishing a try. I also bought some skull land that was home to an expensive puzzle, requiring me to give up one of each rare gem to unlock a chest holding a skeleton mask, which made it so regular bone bros ignored me. The day after, I gained another skill, this one allowing me to build quarries that spawn a ton of resources on whatever island they are built on. In addition to the quarry, I built a mining rod that could mine and collect resources without me having to be there. A pretty nice combo. My only complaint was that the mining rods have a pretty small range and can't one-shot the rocks the quarry makes, so this process takes a while, but was still pretty cool. I was still convinced that the demon pickaxe would be my way of finishing the crystal cave, so I couldn't just sit around while the mining rods did all the work, and did some mining of my own. During the mining mayhem, I made some base upgrades, solved this bell puzzle that gave me a chest, built a power plant that increased the crafting speed of nearby structures, and expanded my knowledge of spells and potions. The chest from the bell puzzle gave me a spirit orb that I decided to save for now due to a weird green guy catching my attention. The green guy turned out to be a goblin who hates skeletons, and he rewarded me with a skeleton key for bringing him 100 bones that would unlock any chest for free. Definitely the chillest goblin I've ever met, but the next NPC I would meet was the worst person I could ever run into. The one responsible for scamming me out of my sexy robot assistant, and the cause of all my suffering so far. We buy this. We can't. Wait, there's just a, a clown on the island. He's kind of scary. Let's see what he wants. My name is Hot Frog, and I made this video again. Oh, hello, Hot Frog. I'm curious to know how well you know Forager by now. Uh oh. Play a trivia mini game. If you get at least one answer correct, I will give you super rare rewards. Okay. Let's do this. Okay. What is the princess blah 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 real name? That's wrong. Let's try again. Okay. <laughs> what is two times eight equal to? Two times eight equal to two times eight? Literally sixteen, forty, ninety. Oh no, you almost had it. Okay, I'm starting to think it's rigged. Ultimately, I failed at Hot Frog's game. Once again, he had turned my existence into a living nightmare. But he did give me a chest, so I guess we're cool now. The chest Hot Frog left contained a quiver, making it so bows didn't need arrows. This wasn't the biggest deal for me, since I haven't used a bow the entire run, despite crafting one and upgrading it a while ago. But it was a nice quality of life change, I guess. Following my encounter with Hot Frog, I gained the best magic skill in the game, Transmutation, that allowed me to turn steel into gems using cauldrons. This might not sound that exciting, but it completely solved my rare gem crisis, making upgrades faster since I could craft way more royal steel than I could by just luck farming. Additionally, I crafted a huge backpack and used my spirit orb from the bell puzzle to learn logistics. 
increasing the range of my mining rods and power plant. Then, I ran into the Disney princess of Forager, Anna Banana, who gave me the quest of finding her some flowers, giving me some potions in return. Princess Banana then told me she could make me special clothing that could attract more animals if I could bring her two royal cloth, giving me the chance to become a Disney princess. Not wanting to waste this once in a lifetime opportunity, I quickly crafted the materials in return, being rewarded with a pink bow. The one thing that separates Fiona from Shrek. Empowered by my new pink bow, I gained the confidence to clear the spike trap challenge, claiming 4 spirit orbs as a reward, that I once again put back for a rainy day. While the sun was still shining, I crafted my demon pickaxe and headed into the crystal cave. And like I mentioned before, the demon pickaxe was not the move. That's when I had a moment of realization. Huh? I am... I am so dumb. Yeah, it turns out the answer was in my hands from the start. Now that I could retrieve the frozen key, I confronted the boss, who shared this super annoying ability to freeze me, like the ice wizards from before. Also, Bohemoth? Zero help during this fight. Once I beat the wizard, I leveled up prior to receiving a frozen seal and another spirit orb, giving me a total of 5 orbs. I learned the renewal skill with my level and then used two spirit orbs to unlock shrines and a sigil maker that would both be important soon. Shrines provide temporary buffs that can be rerolled after a short cooldown, making it beneficial to build multiple so you have the best chance of getting useful power-ups. But for now, one was more than enough, making land 50% off for a short time that you know I had to cash in on unlocking the Boney Splatoon and a Fire Temple. Once I had proved that I didn't belong at Boney Hut Juniors, I claimed two more Spirit Orbs, replacing the ones I used earlier. Since I had five Spirit Orbs again, I decided to use four this time. One for a boost in stamina, one to unlock Spirit Forges, which came with another two Spirit Orbs, one to unlock Cosmic Steel, and the last one to gain another heart, since I had thrown away two earlier on that Blood Pact. I found out Spirit Forges were used to make magical materials, like the Cosmic Steel that I just unlocked, but I also saw they could be used to upgrade the rods I found in dungeons, that you needed a lot of rare artifacts to do, so for now, I settled on making some great skulls needed for skull gear. While the skulls were getting great, I used one of my three remaining spirit orbs to boost my damage, and then set up another quarry with mining rods. Now that I had another steady stream of resources, I decided to explore that fire temple from earlier. The temple was full of demons, and floating skulls that could cause explosions, as well as super deadly corridors and puzzles that I had to make it through. Definitely a lot to handle. Deeper inside the temple, I found the fire rod that could make the same explosions the flaming skull heads could. Perfect for getting past the stick vines in the temple. Following the vines led me straight to the boss room, and let's just say, things got out of hand fast. Oh my goodness. Bro, this is absurd. This is insane. This is absurd. This is... Hop Rock. Hop Rock, chill. Okay. Oh my god. Why did he make so many of them? Whoa, whoa, whoa. Can you stop? Can you stop? Stop it! Stop it! Just, just relax. Can you all just relax? Can you all just relax. Is it possible to just relax? Okay, just kill him. 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 He's, he's becoming too problematic. Oh my god! I can't even see what's on the screen anymore. Dude, how? How much? Oh my goodness! Just die, man. Just die. Just die. Just die. Just die. When I finally dealt with the mother demon and all her lackeys. I was rewarded with a fire seal and a spirit orb that I used to buff my damage to bosses because that last fight scarred me pretty badly. With the new fire rod I found, I completed this puzzle that required me to light some pillars, rewarding me with another spirit orb. At this point, these things were all too common. I used two orbs to buff my attack damage and to unlock lasers, which buff mining rods and drones. For the next few days, I went to Grindtown, as I wanted to make some solid upgrades to my sword before my next boss fight, since my current sword was tickling the last one. While in the pursuit of power, I unlocked expert level wizardry and amulets, and upgraded my gear to skull tier before crafting a demon sword to match my pickaxe. There was also some land expansion, but land was starting to get super expensive, so I couldn't buy as much as I wanted like back in the good old days. However, I did unlock this portion with this super old miner guy, who wanted help mining the huge crystal next to him. I guess the druid really was talking about someone else stealing resources. Slowly but surely, I was also filling out the museum, and got around to completing my second exhibit, netting myself another spirit orb that I used to unlock ballistas, meaning 
I could finally walk around my base without fear of a vicious slime attacking me. My next goal was to solve the harder galaxy puzzles from before, which I failed horribly at and ended up googling. Let it be known, I have no shame about this. These puzzles were brutal, especially the ancient one that you can only solve if you manage to see the hint on the outside of the tower. Needless to say, my hatred for puzzles and hot frog was growing every day at this point. Each galaxy puzzle rewarded me with a seal of accomplishment and a spirit orb for my troubles. Not enough in my opinion, but I'll take what I can get. Since I had too many spirit orbs again, I decided to skill pump, using three of my orbs to gain the ability to send items straight to vaults, increase overall vault size, and unlock gambling machines. I bought some land shortly after that had this huge frozen chest that I thought out which contained the lantern making the dark a little less dark. Not bad. Once I proved I was the king of all things slot-like and confirmed luck was oh, on my side, I, messed up. I decided the time was right to challenge another boss, which I can now do since I unlocked sigil makers. But summoning bosses was no cheap task and required a significant amount of resources depending on which boss you were calling out. My new long-term goal for this run was to beat every boss at least once by the end of the 100 days, starting with the only one I could challenge right now. The Slime King. While the Slime King sigil finished crafting, I bought some land belonging to an ice wizard who challenged me to a battle with his brothers. Very annoying. When I defeated the wizard and his brothers in Mortal Kombat, I was rewarded with a spirit orb, which reminded me of the previous orbs I still had, that I used to increase my stamina, health, and damage, saving one orb for if I needed it to learn something specific. Then the time came to finally fight the king of all things goo. King Slime, who, well, was just a big red slime. The boss fight was pretty straightforward, with the winning strategy being to dodge King Slime's hops while dealing with his little slime woods that spawned to help him. Towards the end, though, I started to underestimate the king, and he merely folded me. Wait, 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 <laughs> Okay, Slime King was going kind of hard at the end, I'm not going to lie to you. Slime King started going hard for the city at the end. Once I removed the crown from the king's slimy head, I was rewarded with four spirit orbs and a bunch of rare gems for royal steel making. I used the four new orbs immediately, two for boosting damage and two for increasing loot drops and reducing market restock time. At this point, I was focused on filling out the entire skill web despite if the skill was actually that important. The next most pressing matter was getting my hands on uranium and void stone so I could craft the magical materials needed to summon the three remaining bosses. In order to do this, I needed to make a trip to the void, a purple tinted prison where all the nastiest mobs meet. Kind of like a Twitch streamer's chat room. While my portal crafted, I gathered the rest of the poop needed for that fox guy's quest, which took me force feeding pigs a lot over this 100 day run to get to. He rewarded me with a spirit orb before showing me what he used all the poop for. Brick. Wait, ew! To be honest, a brick is probably the best case scenario. With my void portal finished, I placed it down next to the old crystal miner and headed in to get resources. I started on level 1 and had to defeat all the mobs on the stage before time ran out to progress through the levels, with each level having more baddies to beat. I was also happy to find out that the timer stops once the stage is cleared, giving me time to fill my pockets with void stone, void roses, and uranium. Additionally, the void rewards you with rare loot like toxic sludge and these rare relics for every 5 levels you clear. Things were going pretty smoothly until around level 9 where they decided to spawn in 3 bosses from the ancient temple that were almost moving too differently for me. But I managed to beat them and claimed a lot of loot including some thunderstrike potions. But things only got more difficult from here, and on level 14 I made my final stand against a bunch of those annoying ice wizard bosses from the crystal cave. I felt good about the run, considering it took me only 3 days, until I saw the leaderboard. Run finish, you made it to level 14, wait a minute, some guy, some guy made it to level, what is that? That level, level, two... what, what level is that? It turns out my 14th stage run was nothing more than a drop in the bucket, but that was okay with me since I collected more than enough resources to do some serious crafting. While crafting the materials needed for boss sigils and gear upgrades, I filled out my third museum exhibit, gaining another spirit orb. With the two spirit orbs in my possession, I boosted the speed of magical structures and increased my dodge chance so I would have an advantage against these upcoming bosses. On day 78, I crafted the coolest pickaxe upgrade yet, the void pick. 
that cause resources to explode. I can't lie, this entertained me for way longer than it should've. The next boss I wanted to challenge was the very rude robot summoned by the Toxic Sigil, because there's no way that they're more toxic than the average clutch viewer, so I should be fine. I think we'll just use it. Okay, what are his attacks? Is, is that what he does? I don't really want that to hit me. Oh! I see. Okay, yeah, he's kind of a problem. The Toxic Guardian was quite the menace. Aside from the exploding crystals, the Guardian also had a laser beam and was not afraid to let that guy loose. On top of the laser, the Robot Rebel also had a move that created a wall of exploding crystals. I tried to punish this with my Void Kick, but ended up getting blasted. Fortunately for me, the Guardian didn't despawn, allowing me to finish it off and claim some rare loot along with four more spirit orbs. The day after dealing with the toxic bot, I filled out my fourth museum exhibit, meaning it was Spirit Orb O'Clock. I used two orbs to speed up farming structures and increase the duration of buffs I gained, before jumping back into the Void Portal for Kraken Eyes, a resource needed for the next sword upgrade that can only be gathered by fishing in the void. Seaweed! When I returned from my fishing trip, I unlocked some land that had this weird wizard guy who was a little too self-aware. I see you have found my tower. Uh, I mean, it wasn't exactly hard to find. You know, I am going to make you go fetch some items, right? Yeah, I guess that is kind of the like, uh... I like how self-aware all the characters are. The old wizard wanted some cinder blooms that I had on hand, but decided that that wasn't good enough for his magic scepter, and now he needed five star fragments, something I didn't have. The wizard's tower also had three bookshelves that just spit out random scrolls when it wasn't on cooldown. Seems like a wizard to me. To get the star fragments for the old magician, I needed to craft some star scrolls, but could only make one right now due to me lacking spell specific materials. While gathering the stuff needed for the wizard, I decided to deal with nuclear machinery, which causes structures to craft double items no matter what, which is pretty cool. But in order for the structure to work, you need nuclear fuel cells, which I did not know at the time, rendering one of my factories completely useless until I crafted some fuel. Hot Frog really thought of everything. During the nuclear fallout, I collected the star fragments for the wizard, who had one final quest for me before I could receive his super special magic scepter. Bring him 10 void steel, which I was planning to use on a void sword, but now had a decision to make when the last steel finished crafting. While I gave the wizard's proposition some thought, I unlocked the fire tower, and you should be able to guess what's in there by now. Before upsetting my day, I bought some more land that had another old guy on it, and gave the wizard the 10 void steel he was looking for. In return for the expensive quest line, he gave me his magic scepter that gave all rods infinite charge. Not terrible, but I felt pretty robbed since I wasn't really using rods at this point. But still, not the worst thing ever. The new old guy next to the shrine didn't have a quest for me, and was just really mean, which is probably lore accurate if we're being honest. Since being insulted by the old man wasn't fun, I left to upgrade my backpack and investigated this strange obelisk but couldn't get it to work. I also unlocked trains and railroads, which was by far the goofiest thing in the game. Okay, wait, you need so many of these for them to be like, viable. Oh my god, this is so stupid. Let me out of this stupid thing. <laughs> this is so stupid. Once I played with my toy train, I went to confront my fear of puzzles and, well... Oh my lord. I give up, I give up, I give up, I give up. I, I, I can't, I can't, I can't. My brain is not big enough, it's not big enough. I don't care what, what they say about me, I, it, it's too much, it's too much. What galaxy is this? Fire galaxy? I don't know. The fire puzzle gave me another spirit orb to add to the two I had on me that I used to reduce market prices, make structures repair themselves, and unlock carpentry tables, getting me pretty close to having all the skills. The next few days were spent treasure hunting, consisting of me using the luck potion and trying to find rare objects for the museum and rod upgrades. 
it didn't end well. <gasps> I'm I can't. 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 I thought I could. I thought I could. I tried. I tried to. I I, I really try. I can't. I can't. I'll I'll go insane. Although I didn't enjoy it, the treasure hunt did allow me to find the dinosaur egg for the dripper in green, who gave me some rare gems in return. I also leveled up during the hunt and used my skill point to gain more stamina from food before crafting the void sword that was delayed by the magic man's trickery. Excited to test out my new weapon, I decided my next opponent would be the Skeleton King and began crafting his sigil. While it was crafting, I started gathering resources to summon the final boss, who would no doubt be the most formidable foe yet. Before fighting the Skeleton King, I used one of my many Thunderstrike potions just to even the odds, but I was not prepared for what your boniness was about to do. Oh wait, whoa, whoa, whoa. What does he do? Oh, he throws like a... Whoa, he's like a... Oh my god! That does so much damage! He has like a demon boomerang thing. Oh my god, and he spawns great skulls. Wait, this is too much. Wait. With his bone boomerang and ability to summon great skeletons, the Bone King was a force to be reckoned with. For besting the Bone Lord, I got a bunch of gems and the standard 4 orb payment that I used to unlock the rest of the skills I had neglected until now. I was now a jack of all trades. With one final boss to check off the list, I wanted to get as strong as possible and decided I would use the downtime I had while crafting materials for the sigil to upgrade my thunder rod, especially since now I could use it forever. And once upgrading it, I could definitely see why it was so expensive. Ooh, it is powerful. And we have infinite, what's it called? Oh, whoa, whoa, whoa. Wait, this is kind of crazy. Now armed with my new rod, and having crafted the last sigil, I was ready to take on the final boss. This one being a familiar face. The same face of some kind souls I wronged at the start of this 100 day run, and a fitting way to answer for my previous crimes. I wasn't going to underestimate this foe, and use multiple potions that I gained from my blood pack long ago to make sure I was ready. The time had come to face my past. What attack does he have? Oh! Oh! Wait! Wait, the dark beat is crazy! Wait, the dark beat is actually it's... okay, okay. You are ugly and I hate you! Wait, the dark beat goes crazy! You are the worst person in the history of what? What did he say? In the history of ever? You hate me so bad. Oh, 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 whoa, whoa, whoa. I'm gonna keep on your chip. Beat. Oh. Bro, getting hit once takes so much health from you. Okay, where did he go? He said something else. You should be dead. Like, seriously, a lot. <laughs> oh. Oh. Oh my god, my bottle theory saved me. Okay. He actually killed me. This beat is actually a menace. I will never stop hating you. <laughs> I like how 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 he's the exact opposite. Oh oh, the, the like friendly beats. It's kind of crazy. Oh my goodness. Bro. Nice. Not a monster. So we got monster and not a monster. Defeat the dirt beat. Finally killed the dark beat, bro. Jesus. That man was. That man was not. Was not playing around. Well, what did he give us? Defeating the dark beat was the biggest accomplishment of this run. Was it enough to pay for my past crime? Probably not. But I can say for sure that I did a good deed today. As for the rest of the hundred day run. I used the Dark Beat Spirit Orbs to boost my health to 11 hearts, worked on the museum exhibit some more, crafted a new droid to replace Bo, who was actually kind of cute, solved a few puzzles, challenged some of the bosses again, and helped this engineer guy by giving him some royal steel so he could continue his complicated work that I probably wouldn't understand. So nothing out of the ordinary.
I had come a long way during these past 100 days. Starting off on a humble square with nothing more than a basic pickaxe, I set off to become the prospector of my dreams. Encountering tons of obstacles along the way, I had to make a lot of decisions. Were they all good? No. Did I meet genuine friends? Probably not. But I did stay true to myself. Well, sometimes. And that's something to be proud of. If you enjoyed the run as much as I hate Hot Frog's puzzles, consider leaving a like and subscribing for more content. We aren't too far from 1k, and that'd be kinda cool to hit. Also, to my current subs, thanks for your continued support, it really does mean a lot, and I will catch you guys in the next one. Laters.